Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Conversations with Cornelius. I'm your host. I'm Cornelius. And Just I, in case you thought I was. In case you thought this uh, beautiful specimen beside me uh, was me, you're wrong. <laughs> you fucked up royally. Straight from the get-go, you have made a mistake. I would say forgive yourself because it's all about forgiveness, this planet in which we live in. So the books have been telling us. Not well, and literally they've been telling us now because we've got audio books. Audio books are out there now as well as well as manual old school reading books. This is the beginning of the podcast, and and if podcast, you're still tuned in, well done. <laughs> fair play to you. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I bring on to the stage uh, this week's special guest. Before I bring her on, I just want you to know this is a seat of the pants podcast. We have actually not taught about anything we were going to say today, um, bar. We're going to talk about the, well, actually, I suppose we have. We're going to talk about the night of the live podcast, but we haven't talked about it until right this minute. And yes. We're like four days after the event. We, uh, um, I was gigging. Anyway, right. Bring to the stash. Bring to the stash. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stash uh, today's guest, the beautiful, fantastic, and phenomenally savage in bed, Noel Patricia <laughs> O'Sullivan. <laughs> okay, Shley. <laughs> I'm just looking down now. Cornelius has mm. my slippers on with his socks up over the deal with it. Tracksuit pants. Deal. Classy. I said I wasn't going to have my Actually, leg available. Are these your mother's? No, they're mine. Okay. Are they? Did your mother have a pair of? Probably similar. Yeah. Me and your mom have similar style and slippers, which is something that we have between ourselves. But whatever. Quan, anyway, yeah. How are you? I'm great. I'm very good. Mm. Great today. Great Monday today. morning. Yeah. yeah. I'm great for a Monday morning. I think I'm good. Tell me why you're great on this Monday morning. I think I'm great <coughs> this Monday morning because the kids are really back to school now today because Hunter's a week uh, and a half into school and he's there till two today and he's loving it and Harvey's happy out going to school. So it's good. I feel like the summer was chasing our tail trying to get stuff done around the kids, trying to keep our shit together with the kids as best as possible. And now we can drive forward again. Hmm. That's as good a reason to be in a good mood on, uh, on a Monday as any. Um, you also went for a run. Yes, I went for a quick run uh, because I haven't, I've very sporadic been running and jogging, whatever you want to call it. And I said, no, we're back now. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and I'm just building it up 20 minutes at, like I was gone for about 40 because I walked to start and there's a particular starting where I start the run and then I there's a loop so I ran for 20 minutes and then walked the rest of the loop so you were moving for 40 minutes 20 yeah. plus 20 is 40 and how are your endorphins very good yeah you're like. fucking you're annoying me you're so happy mm. You're, you're, well, you're not annoying me. You're no, you're just. You're actually kind of I inspiring know, me. No, you know I know what it about? is. It's, it happens. As, it happens when one of us gets going before the other yeah. one. The other one gets kind of. You're like. Well, like, you're not your run? secretly because you've just said it out on the <laughs> podcast. But normally, I'd be kind of going supportive, but not there. Not there, like not living it. Whereas yeah. when you'll be running now yourself, which will come. Within a week. Well, I'm going to try and go for a walk today. Yeah, but that's that's already because I went for a run this morning. Yeah, Do you is. know what I mean? It is. But it'll come. But in the interim, it's like, okay, I'm really happy for the other person. Mm. But it's making me feel like I need... It's it's putting a pressure. And I hate pressure being put on me. Yeah. I mean, All of us it, hate it. Unless it's said to us in a particular way. It has to be... Well, no, I just hate it. Like, don't... Don't ever suggest anything. Anything to you. Well, I've, I'm fucking never stop. I'm always suggesting stuff to you, but like in subtle ways. Yeah. In subtle ways. And they're they're not that subtle because they're subtle enough to cover my hole that if you go, what are you talking about? I was, I was just saying that ice is nice to cool down a beverage. I wasn't saying anything else. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, but I'm in a kind of a quagmire of queerness at the moment. Um, I, well, yeah, I suppose you're battling a bit of depression. I'm battling a bit, of, a small bit of depression, and it, it's, uh, it's the thing is, there's a small fire as well that I'm adding petrol to all the time. I'm fucking 
eating shit. I'm, I'm trying to, I've been trying to stop drinking for the last four weeks, five weeks after a summer of indulgence. Because I know what's ahead of me. It's like abstinence. It's pure abstinence. And um, I and fucking definitely consuming too much Mary Jane as well. You know, I just feel I'm in a quagmire of queerness and I need I to... I think that's all... I think that's all to do with the summer. Do you think so? Yeah, I do. I think there's a lot of people that will say that summer is a lot harder for them to exercise and I be in that frame it. because there's more out and about, there's more meeting friends, there's more drinking, just... The Fine matches day. are on. You're going to you're going to matches. Like you're going for a few pints after the matches. You're, you're going to your, watch matches. You're going to watch matches. At the pub. And then when, yeah, yeah. But you're like, I mean, your life is for living as well, then, isn't it? It's like it's just trying to get the balance right. Like, I mean, I love like I like like yesterday. That was a good example. We went to a soccer match. My son was playing a soccer match yesterday. We took the boys to it. Um. Then later that evening, uh, I took the two boys to the pub. I had two pints and I came home and I smoked a doob when they went to bed and I had another doob later to the night and it's like just unnecessary like I just feel mm. I feel I'm it's unnecessary consumption and I feel it's kind of like Starship Enterprise I'm clinging on I'm yeah cling, well you see cling you, on I'm a so cling on to the you're summer you're wrecked because you were working and I was, hard yes right but you also had two pints on Friday night See, I was a Noma. I forgot about that yet. Last night. And it's like, it's not like I'm getting locked. It's so not they like They do I'm, impact your body. That's they do. The thing. They do. Like one pint, one drink, and my f- watch can tell me I had drink. Yeah. My sleep is impacted. Yeah. I don't feel it. Like, just because you're not necessarily screamingly hungover. Yeah. I feel the two pints I had yesterday now, and they were gorgeous. They, and this is my fucking dilemma. I love to live my life, but I want to feel good. <laughs> and the things I love to do don't make me feel good. What about, have you, would you, so you drink Coors Light, right? When you go to the pub, you have yeah. a pint of Coors Light. What about a pint of Heineken Zero? Would you, or would you just feel you ridiculous? The, like, I will, I drink Heineken Zero all the time when yeah. I'm at gigs. Yeah, but would you if feel ridiculous if you... I would feel... I I don't see the I don't like I'm not interested in going over to the pub to stay sober. <laughs> I'm going over to alter my mind to lighten my my mood to to, to socialize and like it was lovely yesterday. I went over yesterday you now the two boys. Went, sure, you know what it's like on a Sunday. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. like our local is amazing. Like it's just like all the kids from the village are in there and Hunter and Harvey. They, their friends were there and they were out the back Beyblading. Hunter was playing pool. There was a hurling match. Middleton were playing Aaron's own on the television. Uh, I walked in. Um, uh, two people who were at the show um, mm-hmm. were 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 uh, were sitting um, at, at our opera house show. Where were sitting down. Um, I got chatting to them. Their patrons here as well. I was like, "Fucking, this is, you know." So it was it was so cool. And then, um, uh, girl that you play football with. Um, uh, came in and her husband and I was chatting to him and chatting to Packy behind the bar and you know one or two like I wouldn't get any inter like my interactions besides that right are you and the boys and the audience that I'm talking to and if I'm traveling with someone to the gig do you know that kind of yeah, way yeah, yeah, yeah. and I I just think it's like it's not that I seek that out or that, that I, it's not something that I I crave but I just think it's it's good because I'm not I'm introverted in, in like I know people think that I'm that's weird. Well, I know, like, but like it's a nice way to socialize. I, I, I understand that. Yes, but then half the time you don't want to talk to anybody either when you go to the pub. So I kind of don't know if you're. I do. That's and I, your niche for your socializing in a sense that you also went for a walk with Ty during the week. Mm. Like that's more what I would have associated you with your socializing. Yeah. Then the pub part, like. Do you know? I don't know, I suppose you're I kind just, of... You do love it, though. I do love it, like, and I suppose, just, like, and again, it's, like, not going out and get, But there are days that I want to just go and sit down and go on my phone and look at, uh, you know, look at other people's content and maybe do a bit of writing and stuff like that. There are days, like, for example, when I was in, I was gigging in an unreal comedy club on Friday, Friday night above in Oma in County Tyrone, five and a half hour drive to get up there. 
and I was staying in this hotel called Canavan's owned by the famous Tyrone footballer Peter Canavan <coughs> this is what I love about pubs right <coughs> so I went in anyway excuse me <coughs> I went in and I did my gig and it was a great gig brilliant run by a fantastic uh, comedian up there and uh, uh, f- waited till the end of the night you know which is the polite thing to do mm. especially when you're travelling watched every c- comedian and um, tried to talk to everyone afterwards in a professional you know mm. like 10 15 sentence way and then the night was over anyway uh, they got the gig going at eight o'clock i couldn't believe it imagine trying to get coca club going at eight o'clock it's very inspiring but anyway um i was back at the hotel for half ten yeah right and i was like okay the car's parked up here now there's a pub that i can walk to like my own pub here um and it's part of the hotel and it's half ten, like I wouldn't be going to bed till one o'clock anyway. Sure, fuck, it'd be rude not to go for a couple of pints. And I brought, I done my, I did the gig and I did new stuff at the gig and it went well, but there was some notes I wanted to make. I said, I'll bring my notes down with me. And yeah. I'll just sit in the corner and, uh, but the pub is owned and the hotel is owned by Peter Canavan and the pub is unreal. It's a real old school GA pub, all the jerseys. Are, are up on the wall um, and then there's like so many do you know like Mikko's pub in, in uh, lots of photos and character fierce like. character and if you're GA you'd just be like you could be you could hold a pint and drink a full pint by just looking it's walk. like a museum it's yeah. like a museum much better description than what I was doing well done thank you um, ordered my pint asked your man there was only one other fella in the bar <laughs> right so I was like this is perfect now I can have my mm. have my pint here I can do the writing Um Went up to your man anyway, and I, I was like, I don't really like Guinness unless I know that it's, you know, well poured. So I just said to your man, I said, has there a, I said, what's the Guinness like? He goes, oh, she's flying all night and there's only one other fella in the bar. And I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> I couldn't say fucking no then, like, I couldn't say yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she's flying, and he, he was being sincere, so I've, he gave me a Guinness anyway, and it was only all right. Um, but then, of course, I had to stay on that then because I didn't want, but anyway. Next thing, um... The door swung open, and in 1999, Tyrone Ladies All Ireland winning team were having their reunion. They'd have all been around my age, and in they flocked. And then they put up on, they changed the television and had a video of them playing that match up there. And I, that's what pubs are. Magic kind of stuff happens, and it brings people into you know yourself with mothers mm-hmm. and others. You know the mm-hmm. crack that you can have in a pub afterwards. So I don't know. I don't know. They're just little fucking escapes from life that you well actually that's what I was going to say I think it's more I think it's more like if you were here right and on a Friday night if you or a, I don't know Tuesday night if you're home and you said babe I'm going to go away over to the pub there like I'd say alright okay right, so we'll see you later Um, whereas if you said to me babe I'm going to go into the other sitting room there like well, I do that too, but that's more if you're going working, you need to rest. Mm. But if if on your leisure and you're not working and you're you're not going working that evening, and at about like six o'clock, if you turned to me and said, "Right, I'm going in there now," do you know, mm. I'd be like, "Huh?" Mm. Yeah. Whereas, and it would be a lot. You definitely wouldn't get the same solace, like no, because they're right there. No, like you wouldn't. Like, they're out in the hallway or they're... So, is it that you need to f- fill... You're not... That cup is in full of no. quietness that you need to get it from somewhere. Like, not quietness either because maybe for those times, there's two different times, I think, that you go to the pub. I'd, like, for for example, yesterday, there's a part of me as well that loves bringing the boys to the pub. Yeah. I just think it's in... My dad brought me to the pub. You know, his dad brought him to the and pub. And it's such an inclusive pub as well. Yeah. It's like there's an enclosed area out the back and during the daytime, it's the kids' area. Like yeah. the, the owner's kid is there and it's uh, like it's very wholesome. It's not really wholesome. It's not dingy and dark and thing. It's like I wouldn't bring, I wouldn't be bringing the boys up to, up to fucking, um, you know, Fred Zeppelin's <laughs> in Cork yeah, City, like, yeah, you know, for yeah, a couple yeah. of pints. I'm taking them over to our local bar and I think it's nice to be in the community and I think it's... They're meeting people they know and parents they know. It's kind of... So you know the way, I, I like, when we moved over here, when we lived in Ballyclaw, when you and I lived in Ballyclaw, I never went out. Mm. I never, ever went out. 
I forced myself when we moved over here. Remember, I used to force myself at the start. I was like, I'm going to, I because ha- we bought the house to stay in this community, to live in this, yes. in this place. And I was like, and it took you ages to get into the community. I was, you yeah. know, t- and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. now you're way more invested in it than I am yes, almost. Yeah. And I just feel, I do, I like, I'm not going to come on and say I don't like a few pints now. I love a few pints. Mm-hmm. But there's more going on, like, you know, bringing those two, to bringing the two scallywags with me yesterday. They couldn't, they were so excited. They were going to the pub. And then I, I gave them their wages, five euros each. I'll tell you now, they're, so they're coming over anyway. And I said, you can get whatever you want now in the pub, but you're spending your wages, but you can't have Coke, right? Uh, Hunter's like, I'll get a seven up. And Harvey goes, I'll get a my waddy. And I was like, that's good idea now, Harv, because the my waddy will cost you nothing and you'll still have your five euros. And Hunter, you'll that'll be two fifty now for yours, so you'll only I change back to my waddy so <laughs> And then Harvey said, Maybe I might risk one euro on a packet of chips. And um that was the deliberation then going over and back. And this this is all part of we're trying to teach them about money and stuff like that and yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not saying that I didn't want to go over for two pints I definitely did but there's other things at play like talking to Dominic now as well yesterday talking to Pa talking to to Packy just you know like just ten like five minutes you know conversations you know we're we're the O'Sullivans we're not fucking weirdos yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah we've got two boys we we like a beer we like hurling <laughs> i don't know like i don't know what it is it's intrinsic in irish people but it's just something that i like to do and i feel i'm only asking because i don't have it at all really you, you don't but you also do like uh, you do have you but you never had it you'd go home when you were living in uh in cork and you, you told me you used to just go home and not even go out yeah and you lived like you know because you had it all your life. You restaurants. You worked in restaurants. Well, like, I'd, but I'd go out when I was younger. Younger, I'd go out, but I never had the fear of not going out, like the fear of missing out. But then, definitely, I would have not gone out for a lot longer. Like, as in, I'd stopped going out when I met you or whatever. Not going out completely, but like, but I'd have no grow to go out on a Saturday evening, like mm. do you know, or doll up and go out. Or, yeah. Um, and but I still love my sup, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so I like to have my sup at home. But I think anybody that was but the I do Cork like then, house, <laughs> I do. <laughs> the other night will definitely know you. I like do yourself. like going to the pub as well. I like all the aspects that you just discussed in meeting and talking to people as well. But I, it, it just doesn't. I would never. At, so if we go the equivalent at six o'clock in the evening on a random, I would never say, "Oh, I'll go for a few." Mm. vodka's there well you see ad- again now a lot of what drives it for me is matches yeah like Aaron Zone and Middleton were playing yesterday on TG Car. now I could easily watch it here you see me try to watch matches here if I lie down in this couch to watch a match I'm asleep five minutes into the match yes yeah yeah if I'm inside in the other r- room trying to watch it um, uh, I, I'm fit to throw the two boys out the window yeah <laughs> right so the only way I can watch a match at the moment is to you know it's not the only way, but like it is a way that I can watch is, is, is to go for a pint. And they're also like, you know, discussing if I go, the match, discussing a match. And I don't know, I think it, like I'm I'm definitely not unique. Like, I mean, men like to do to have a beer and talk about hurling and football. It's kind of a thing with us. I don't know if you've yeah, ever yeah, heard yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> it's just a thing that we do. We love to talk about sports and it's like shit talk. It's just a way of I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And I was I'm not this. I wasn't this person before I moved here. This is the interesting thing because you're with me. We're 10 years married this Friday. All right. And um, not that you would know anything about it, I'd say. You didn't even have it in, up in the calendar. But uh, I have a, a weekend booked away for us. You may as well find out about it here live in the podcast. You mean the one that I booked? You booked one as well? Oh, okay. We'll just go with the one you booked, so <laughs> I'll cancel my one. <laughs> but, um, like, for the first... We're here five years. For the first six years, I wasn't, like... Like, I wouldn't go to the pub on... Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah. you know, but I just think, uh, you know, I just, since we moved. Do you like to fiddle for a few? Yeah, but I'd go with you. It was yeah. rare. I'd, like, I'd yeah, go. That's because we don't kids then as we well. Kids, yeah. So we would have gone for a couple, yeah. like, so now you have no choice but to go on your own. Yeah, it's great. kids along. Yeah, but even you're, like, I know what you're saying, you're not as, 
as regular to the pub. But like you, you go down on a Wednesday if you play mothers and others. If you train with mothers and others, you're in there afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, will we talk about the the podcast? Yeah, sure. The live podcast festival. Yeah, festival. Give the listeners uh, your take on it, the build up to it, and the day itself. And the day itself. The event in question. The big dilemma was what to wear, mm. which kind of didn't. I kind of had an idea what I was going to wear, and then I tried it on the night before a course, and I was like, nah, I'm not going to be comfortable sitting down in this. As I sit here now in tracksuit pants and a tracksuit top after coming back from running. But. Ravishing. <laughs> but, uh, so I was like, oh, what am I going to wear now? So I figured I found something anyway. But. I think on the day we were busy anyway, so it didn't really... Like, I wasn't nervous at all, at all, really. You were surprisingly extre- very calm until the sound check. Well, I think... So, I think all along, it's a job. It's, there's jobs to be done every day. I wasn't... Th- you don't have time to think about yourself, mm. like, really. You don't have time to think about... It's all about ticket sales. It's about... We weren't rehearsing. There was none of that racket. So you're not in it. You're just doing the stuff for it and doing the stuff for everything else, like running the business, blah, blah, blah. So it wasn't. So then on the day, I was excited when we went for something to eat because we were in the city. Mm. I definitely have to bring the city in. But then you spend money when you go to the city. like Yeah, but it's okay to spend money. This is the thing as well. Like, I mean, obviously we have to be prudent and we have to be frugal and make sure that we have enough money to pay our bills. But I, I think it's... It's all, like you don't like I like you bought some jewelry and stuff like that. Noel, when was the last time you bought, you even said it to me? You were, you were like, when was the last time I bought jewelry outside of Duns or Pennies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but know, this was still only costume jewelry, but it was new look. But it was the idea of looking. I I'd only have bought in Duns because it was it was I'd be in Duns anyway. It's here in Mallow. Like that was the thing. It was browsing. Mm. I can just the array of stuff for the same price or cheaper or dearer. Like it, that wasn't the point. It was just the the choice like there's a world in Cork that I never go near I just go to Dunn's like yeah. Mallow that's if I need to get something it's into Dunn's do How they have it or I that? do that I or I do it online do you know what I mean but I need to by going to Cork by now the kids are in school when we have mm. you know ourselves set up properly in the business again and are on top of everything going I'm actually going to go to Cork on Thursday and browse and pick something up that I need to buy, yeah. but you know what I mean. It's part of the, the go like, you know, dropping off stuff to the counted and then spending an hour in the city. I don't even have a desire to kind of. Then by going back, I kind of do now. Like we'll say, myself and mother were in. We were in. She had an appointment last week, and we were in Balancholic and we went to drop something to your dad. Then, and I was like, "Come on, we we'll just go away home," like. Mm. We were right beside Marina Market, which is oh, lovely. Yeah. Do you know? And I had thought about it, but then I kind of went, "Oh, we won't bother spending the fifty quid that to go there." Do you know for two? So we'll just go away home. But I'd been up in the city, like, and we did nothing, like, yeah. do you know, besides our two jobs. And there is a buzz out of doing that as well, like going. But then there's that kind of living part mm. <laughs> of of the world that. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's like. You have to, I think you have to, it's like going for the pints, it's like going for the browsing, it's like going to Marina Market. We don't do it every day. We work really hard mm. with parenting and trying to get the, you know, with the Coco Club and my own comedy career. And like you, you're flat out running the all the back issues with that as well, not to mention our podcasts and mm. reels and stuff like that. We've talked about that at nausea in, in the past. But like, it's important to go for those two points. It's important to go down to the marina market and spend an hour with your mam eating a fucking taco. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's important yeah. to do that. It's as important. And if that costs I think a we need amount, I think it's the fact that we need to plan it and carve it in to because mm. we've kind of slashed it out. Yeah. And we probably need to bring it back in a bit. Like, Small but yeah. A small bit, and yeah. that's it. It's not yeah. every week, and it's not all the time, and it's. But it's. I well, think I've I turned the euro in our. In a, I set up a Revolut fund for date date night. It's called. Oh. It, and I've turned the euro in it. I, I've only set it up three weeks ago. Tenor 
every week I put it. Oh, yeah, 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 you know? yeah. So, like... I won't go far. Now, in saying that, we are going away for the weekend, this weekend, for yeah, our anniversary. Yeah, I booked you, but she's after booking another one. But, like, we'll go I think it's one. the... I think it's just... So, that was that was part of the day, anyway. The podcast festival day, bringing it back to the day. Bring it back to the day. So, so go on. So, I browsed. There was a, a window, and I thought I was pretty Roman gone wrong, really, though, to be fair, not because it wasn't inside and, like... Well, YouTube. you are a pretty woman, but you Thanks. just didn't have... The funds behind Pretty Woman. Or I pro- didn't have the thing. You're not though. a prostitute, like. Oh, that part as well. Sorry. <laughs> like you're not a prostitute <laughs> with a with, a, with a client who's got a deep pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I you are a pretty woman. Thanks. So I didn't. I wasn't not a prostitute. Not a prostitute. I didn't get to uh, go. What was big mistake? Isn't that what she says? And a big mistake oh, yeah. to your one. But um, when I was there picking up my little bit of jewellery in new, in a new look. How much is this? Twelve ninety nine. Oh, I don't think you could afford it. Big mistake. <laughs> Here's 20. <laughs> Where's my change? Um, so I think that all kind of <coughs> was exciting on the day. Oh, the day was going well. Went to see it. Got a ex- little bit of thrills going to the back of the opera house. Into you know the that dressing room with the, the lights room. all around. And <clears throat> I suppose because in a lot of times when I've been in those circumstances it's been as the, like you as the organiser as well yeah. or like we've gone behind backstage the opera house before but it's for people that you know you've wanted to see acts to wish them luck and different things so it was different being the actual um, artist or the performer mm. whatever you want to call it like you would have probably been back there when I was doing the improvised pantomime now as, as well a few times like well I didn't know. go back much only once didn't or you? twice I'd say I actually went back in the improv time Did you? but even that was going back to see you like yeah or getting something <coughs> for you like it was yes. just a bit different just well you were different. you were you were you know absolutely pivotal to the night in terms of like a perfor- from a you were a performer yeah you were a performer in so the, that was it was your different. first gig and it was the Cork Opera House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Now, I will say, go on, no, we'll get on to that in a minute. Go on. So then, so that was all good. We met um, the organisers and stuff like that and like Joe the, and the the sound check was starting <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're still chatting here now but like, can, are we sorted? Like, is this, is this, you know, I was getting into kind of like, <clears throat> Comedy con, comedy mode. con mode, and I had said to you the day before I could be comedy con mode now. So you know, yeah. so throughout the day, so <clears throat> yeah, everything was great up to then. Had Alana come in and done your makeup at this stage? She was doing it, done it, done it, yeah, done. So, so that was lovely. Yeah, so, so that was another lovely thing. You had your niece came backstage, and you had your own dressing room, and. She was inside, and it was cool with all the bulbs. It was really cool. Now, yeah, like I, I, I was getting my jollies Alana, for you. Like, like I didn't, so I didn't have to worry about my hair and makeup. And Alana came, and she set up all, her, all makeup, like and it's like a professional yeah. makeup do. Yeah, it was like my hair, hair yeah. and makeup, hair and done. makeup. Yeah, and so I didn't have to worry about that because I know Alana always does it well. Anyway, so like, even though it was very funny because we had the mirror on us, I was like, Jesus, Alana, what you doing? And she's. Like, and Alana was, I'd say, was biting her tongue. She was like, I fucking, I've been doing your makeup now for about 10 years. Like, you were turning into, see, you were turning a little bit into Comedy Con. The nerd, the, the, it was just being twisted. The dial was being twisted. This is what happens. Every, yeah. You just kind of become a little bit more nitpick, nitpicky. Happens to me sometimes in Coco as well. If it's a big gig and I'm, you know, there's a lot of people coming in and, you know, you're just nitpicky, like, you yeah. know. But I think as well, because I was able to see in the mirrors as well as she was oh, doing so it. Much. So it was like, yeah, so it was funny. I'd, so then we were out on the stage, and we'd been on the stage already, but this was for the sound check. And then and Joe and Ed and Keelan were there as well. These are the guys that are producing the whole festival, and um, I, I was there, and we, I, I was chatting to someone, and then I was like, "We better do the sound check," and. I gave you yours and you did your sound check and you but you were like oh, oh, oh. no so you gave me the mic and next thing the lights came on <laughs> yeah I was like whoa and then it was like okay do your sound check there and I'm like I'm used to sitting here in my sitting room doing sound check going the weather is lovely outside it's you know what are we going to talk yeah. about on today's podcast like that's my sound check and Connie's going oh one two three four la 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 bop, 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 bop. and I'm going hello yeah that thing and I was like 
What am I? Well, the to fucking say? sound wasn't great. It's uh, like I mean, we did a sound check. The sound popped back for an, an awful lot during the fe- during the the actual gig. But anyway, that's neither here. But nor I there. think that was we didn't give the sound check the time. Like, yeah, do you know? I don't think that's so. what I felt as well. That the la- there was people around. There us was there was, and, and it was like no it's sound check time now. Can we have? Yeah, like normally you'd say, and like I think that was where. And this is something that you've spoken about that Chris is like adamant about at that stage. So, yeah. And Chris, I think Chris's sound check could be a half an hour. Yeah, and I think that we And like people are like he's a half an hour, but all he's doing is talking into him, but he is critiquing it. He's critiquing it and he'll get he uh, not only will he do the sound check, he'll have me up. He'll he go, "Okay, move over there to the left. Post office." Can you hear that? Do you know yeah. how is it? Is it Chris? Is it reverby stuff like that? So we didn't. You're right, but you got nervous as well. Yes, then and, I yeah. and I was like, I kind of went into for all for for better phrase, kind of protecting mode. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just said, do you know what you do now, love? You just go back up there to Neve and open up the bottle of wine. You need a drink. You need a That's drink. <laughs> and so I, I took didn't that. have to ask her twice. I, I took that as okay because. I would have had a drink at one o'clock if I'd have been let because I was out and about and yeah. in with a shout. So the fact, woman. So the fact that it was about half in six at this stage. Look. So it, it <laughs> <laughs> Pretty woman. How much are these earrings? Twelve fifty? Keep them. I'll take two. Earrings. Like that's twelve. Just one pair. Yeah, one pair. One each. Twelve fifty <laughs> is it? <laughs> but uh so I took that as my you know, as your like going. green light to get locked. <laughs> That's what you took that as. Yeah. So, um, well, I, no, I did just take it as okay. Let's open the bottle. But sure, that to me is the same. Green I didn't have, light to get locked. I didn't have any sparkling water or anything. No. So I we yeah. But it was lovely then. Yeah. So Neve and uh, Neve was backstage getting her makeup done. Then hair makeup done with you and Chris arrived as well, and we were in our dressing room and you your dressing room and. Uh, and of course, we didn't do the questions till there and then. We didn't do the questions till there. I actually did do Chris's questions. I had Chris's questions written before I got to the, um, before Chris got there. But I had no questions written for you, really. Uh, you kind of came up with your own questions. And Neve then said she'd come up with her questions. Well, ne- she was ne- expecting me to have questions written. Yeah, Neve did not say, I'll come up with my own questions. <laughs> you said, right, Neve, you need to write your questions. And Neve's like, it's seven o'clock. Sorry, Neve. Yeah. yeah. Which, that's an hour to write a couple of questions. It's loads of yeah, time. But loads of time. What do you want to ask? But anyway, the the, the the shtick was that we were, we had a shtick was that basically Noel's questions would be aimed at Chris having a go at me. And Neve's questions would be aimed at Chris, or talk, uh, talking to me having a go at Chris. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was just a bit of shtick and it was all tongue in cheek, but it was... It ended up getting very to the bone, like I mean, like like uh, in in a hilarious way. We felt anyway. Yeah, but uh, like I like so they were your seven, Chris. I think did kind of quite a serious, like quite a matter of fact. So before we knew it, it was like eight o'clock in time to go on stage, and we had set the target of two hundred people, and we ended up having two hundred and six people at the gig. So that was that was very pleasing because it was a Wednesday night, lads. The week most of the kids in Ireland went back to school. Yeah, a sc- like a school night on the very first week of school. Yeah, um, settling back in yeah. after Coldplay, I uh, think was a big one and too. Oasis and a summer of spending and you know it's t- like most families are like right okay Cut. we're we're, we're battling we're battling down the hatches now yeah and we're we're starting as we mean to go on meaning it's today yeah do you know so to get a couple of hundred people out. I was delighted, really delighted. Um, I thought the Opera House could have used a little bit more um, cleverness in how they sa- sat them. Like, there was a lot of people up the back that could have just moved down to the front. Do you know what I mean? Like, when they were, the way they were selling the tickets, I thought there could have been a little bit more clever strategy. But look... That you wouldn't have the back the back of the thing available until... Well, well it's like I've been in venues where they, they, they sell seating in a, 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 a staggered way. Oh, the yeah. first 200 are the front row, the first five or six rows. Uh, the next 200 are the next things rows. And then, you know, you're filling up the front and then you've the front done and then you open the balcony and so on and so forth. That's like, I felt they could have done that because it was a little scattered around the place. But Joe was telling me the next day that there was a great feeling. With, he sat in the middle of the audience. Right, And yeah. he said there was a great feeling. There was a great buzz within the audience and you wouldn't really know it when you're in there. But anyway... Eight o'clock came and the crack was 
I was going to go out and do 15 minutes stand up and bring on Chrissy, do 15, and then I'll come back on and ask him questions. And that's what I did. I did new enough material that went reasonably okay, actually. It's been stuff that I've been working on over the last few weeks. And mm-hmm. I was I was like, I'm ready to, to test this now on a kind of an audience that knows me. Um, and it's, there's a lot of work to go on that. But it was good. It was good. I was very happy with it. Chris came on, did 15, and the course was brilliant. Then I came on and I had my three questions to Chris. And we we had a good... We should, we could we could have done the whole podcast there and then like you know yes where, yeah 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 it was interesting and good yeah yeah and it was like I, like the questions were about comedy and about excelling in comedy and how to yeah. write jokes and what the, like you know and then we had the break and that's when the madness happened because by the time we got back to the break the two bottles of wine were gone and you had got Alana to bring another one in yeah I you got Alana I text Alana to say can you get a bottle sent back because what happened was she's we not were, in the opera house two seconds and she's getting bottles sent back but we back were, to the stage <laughs> but we were about to go out and get a bottle of wine when the the break well, came yeah. on and you have to go out through the you have to go out to the bar to get a drink like you can't there's no like you have to go out through or outside and around yeah. like you have to go out into the bar to get a drink like that's yeah. how and when you're backstage like so we weren't going to do that when the break was on. No. So that's why I texted Lan and said, get a bottle sent back. And it literally arrived like... That. It was so quick. It was back within so two minutes. Cool. I remember Neve going, how the fuck did you manage to do that? But like, shout out to Alana. Um, we just assemble a great team around us. We it's just always put team. a good, we always put a team around us and the team is always good. And Alana does hair and makeup and she also does drinks. <laughs> and I had Dan, Dan, the only funny German, my right hand man in Coco, out the front lined up to hand out slips for people to write questions in the second half. He also had a roving mic. And the second half, we went backstage. I actually thought there that, that on the Patreon we should, because I have the questions that we didn't get round to... Mm. Um, uh, answering so you, we should answer some of those in the, the Patreon. Patreon brilliant yeah. so definitely do that Yeah, and that'll be the this week's uh, Patreon episode because we were going to talk a bit more about the night in question on the Patreon but I think we've kind of got into it quite a lot here yeah and also on the Patreon just so you know the whole show was filmed the whole show was filmed from start to finish and uh, that's being edited at the moment and when that's edited it's going up exclusively on the patreon page for a period of time yes <laughs> and, um, um so yeah if you're interested in in seeing us in seeing this show you can actually go and see it on the patreon but not now it's not up now i'll let you know in, in, when when it's up so that you can, if you're not signed up you can sign up or whatever if you want to it's up to yourselves no panic five or a month and you get loads of other uh, old episodes as well uh, link is in the description. <laughs> but no panic. <laughs> <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> Sign up but, uh, now. She, she's fucking absolutely she fleecing me look. in earrings. <laughs> she earring. wants to go back to get another pair in yeah. new look. I was like, can we put a deposit on one? Just one earring. We buy half an earring this week. It's like Bitcoin. Buy half one. Then get mm. it up to one. Anyway, the second half. On, I, I came out with Chris. And we had a bit of crack took some questions from the audience and we brought on the special guest, the first special guest, this woman here. Now I'm going to let you take over here from how you were feeling in the build up to till you were called on stage. Oh, I think I was just excited. The nerves were well gone now. They were gone by bottle one. They were drowned. They were drowned. They were drowned out. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I drowned out the nerves. So I was just excited then I think and making sure I could manage the bottle of wine, the questions, cards. You, all that you were missing, basically, when mark, you came out on the, the stage mark. was another pair of hands. Yeah. <laughs> so I had the bottle of wine, the cards, and the glass in one hand, and then the mic in the other. Yeah. And, like, I remember Keelan was, like, just before I went on stage, he looked at me and he goes, I'd like to help you, <laughs> but I can't really, <coughs> if all of this is going on stage with you. <laughs> I said, it is, yeah. No, it's fine. I've got them. It's mm. okay. Mm. So, um, so then I think the, the You got mood, a massive roar as well when you came on. Do you remember did that? I? Yeah, massive roar. I think the mood was set from bringing the bottle of wine out. Yeah. I think that's set. This is a change <laughs> now. We're changing the The, the whole dynamic here. of the podcast changed when yeah, you came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I came out, I was trying to find, hmm, where will I put my glass? Where will I put... 
like settle myself in. It was kind of like something from Father Ted, really, at that moment, I think. It was a bit like, um, mm-hmm. uh, but I just kind of went for it. Then I was like, I know this, the awkward moment of sitting down. It kind of was like, it was lovely, really. It was fucking brilliant. Honestly, it was brilliant. And it kind of threw me back into the cinema, or not cinema, it's a fucking, what's the, the, the sitting room? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. Um, in COVID and you coming home from work and we got the boys to bed and you might be on your first day off or something your second day off and we'd be opening up the wine yeah and i'd be all business coming sitting down sitting down right and you were used to be nervous doing those episodes i remember at the start you used to be nervous doing a podcast to no no camera at all we have a camera this is going live on youtube as well you can check it out on youtube guys sign up to my youtube (laughs) youtube (laughs) youtube but like what like and but it was always wine and fucking Jesus Christ almighty and righty okay right so come on what are we talking about sex is it Jesus Christ don't be talking about sex do you know it was like yeah, that was the yeah, vibe yeah, like yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and uh, you fucking settled down anyway and it was great gas all together and yeah go on to, I, I can't even really remember my questions even anymore. And you know, we won't, even, we, we, won't we won't get into it because people will be able to tune into the Patreon and watch it right um yeah, but the the you had three questions. You asked those; que- they were great questions. It was funny, like it was funny, like yeah. And then Chris, because I have, I obviously, I think what was funny as well is like I think I've had some chats with Chris, but they've been very me reserved kind of like. Whereas the two of you teamed up to fucking hit me with a stick. But like. I don't think he he just wasn't expecting them either. <laughs> he didn't. I don't think he realised how the premise. Like he knew I was asking questions that were going to be kind of about Khan, but like. And how shit I am. Do you know? But what he I mean? didn't know that part. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of being. I don't know how he didn't. I told him, but he's very busy as well. Like yeah, he, he had so been in Dublin that day, and he'd been in Ficker Street I don't the night think, before. I think he just wasn't expecting. Or else he's a good actor. Cause it, but he wasn't expecting me just to sit down beside him and go yeah. pretty much like, is Khan such a pain in the hole on tour as he is at home? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he, but, he, bought, but he, he he went with it. like, yeah, And I mean, the two of you ganged up on me in a, in a way that I'll be going to counselling for a few years, you know, um, just to feel normal again. That's why I'm going for the pints. It's, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah to uh, block it out. But then, uh, and that went, it was very good. It was so funny. And it was getting great reactions. And then we went back into the audience for a few questions. And we were all kind of answering those questions and then we brought out the super secret special guest and that was Neve Neve Kent Chris Kent's wife and um sure she's she's a great friend of ours now um uh, as are the Kents and we've been on a few sessions with them over the last yeah. year and uh it's <laughs> like she just attacked Chris then and it was just <laughs> it was just brilliant it was just so good like it was like like at one stage, I was like, "Okay, we need to re- we need to fucking reel back knee of here now." Yeah, yeah, reel back the two of them. <laughs> it there. was brilliant, but um, yeah, and the audience loved it, and there was loads of cr- just a, lots of laughter, and we felt a lot of love in the room. I felt a lot of love in the room mm. anyway. Yeah, uh, uh, and we got more uh, more questions from the audience, and then we kind of wrapped it up. What I would say is probably went on a little bit too long, but that's because I was in control of that, and I was having so much fun. That I just left it go. I should have, if if it was about fifteen or twenty minutes sooner, um, I think it would have been. You always want to leave people wanting wanting more, more like do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Whereas I'd say people left going, "Geez, that was good." Now it's a bit late. Do you yeah, know that yeah. kind of way? Jesus, I must go home. Yeah, like fuck it. We've no. ki- we've school in the morning. Jesus Christ, you know. But um, that's again more to do with it being the time of the year and the, the day of the week and with the kids and all that kind of stuff. But it was uh yeah, it was so it was so much fun, and uh, I'd say we'll definitely like myself and yourself now are talking a lot lately about podcasts and what we're going to do with this mm-hmm. podcast and what we're going to do with other ideas for podcasts that we have. Um, but what one thing I will say is I definitely think we will, you and I will definitely do another li- live podcast. Yeah, maybe not this year, maybe sometime next year. But I think we definitely will, and um, probably I, a smaller venue. I was just going to say, can, I think, I think as well. All along, it was a bit underwhelming. Even though I know you said that two hundred was the goal of ticket sales, mm. like I was always underselling it, even to myself, because I was like, 
it's not good. it's not sold out opera house. Well, we were it's never just, going to get put a thousand people yeah, in there. Yeah, like, but like, and I know that, so that's why it was kind of underwhelming for for yeah. even for me, <coughs> and even for the show. It's like, well, sure, it's not sold out. But like, if it was in another venue, it would have been sold out. Yeah, and it, like, and it's it's not the like number was great. Like to have two hundred in was really good, and we're very yeah. happy with that. Yeah. And if it was on in a different venue, we would have been ecstatic. Well, it would have been, I think it would be, be, right, uh, like, obviously, your stand-up audience and your podcast audience are two different audiences. There is a crossover, definitely. Mm -hmm. And then you have a good guest like Chris, so you'd have a little few people coming to see Chris. And I I did think uh, people came to see you, like Hazel. Hi Hazel and Jocelyn and all all those girls came, definitely, they listened to, but they're podcast podcast listeners listeners, listeners, as well. But like, I do. I totally get what you're saying. Where, like, you know, like, we, like, it was a great night, but like, we're not at the stage to be selling out an opera house midweek for our podcast. Yes. But if we do one next year, maybe, in maybe the roundy, I think on a Saturday night, and uh, have you know have it have it well organized in terms of well advertised, have a kind of a. A beginning, a middle, and an end. There was a lot of mayhem in in the in it, but mm. I don't know. The mayhem added to it for me, though. I I I enjoyed the fact that it was kind of haphazard. But that was a bit of a show. Yeah, it was a more of a show than mm. a, the podcast. Like, do you know, I think it's a bit of both. You need a bit of both for a live podcast. I do. Be. I think. I think you do. I think you need. Uh, I think you do. You don't want. Like it's not a true. We're not a true crime podcast. Like we didn't. We, there was no true crimes discussed. None. You know, only like misdemeanors around the gaff. But um, all in all, I'll give the experience a massive two thumbs up. I was delighted to be asked to do it in the first place. I was really honoured to be asked to do it because we had done the Cork Podcast Festival the year prior and the venue they had put us into was a place called Maureen's, which is a gorgeous little pub on the north side of Cork City that holds about 25 people. Yeah. Now, we did sell that out, but the tickets were free. (laughs) And And half of the people didn't show up. None of the people who'd bought, who'd reserve tickets. Very few people who'd reserve tickets. But it's but, and up. so the the caveat is that wasn't on a stage. So kind of saying my first time ever on a stage yeah. was the Opera House. It was the yeah. only other, other time I was in front of an audience was a year previously mm. at Maureen's for the 20 people. Maureen's. Happened. And that was just uh, in a pub. We were sitting down in pub seats. But that was great. We I enjoyed that as well. I through that, yeah. You, yeah. It's a common denominator. Maybe you don't go to the pub because you're like, it's t- taken away from your drinking time. I don't go to the pub because it's too expensive to be for the amount I want to drink as well, probably. True. <laughs> True. Okay, on that note, let's go. Let's go. Um, We'll see you next week. Good night. Bye, 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 bye. Stay by the wall. Bye, bye. Stay by the wall. Stay by the wall. If you want to see more of Cornelius Patrick O'Sullivan, then check out his comedy show, A Bird in a Hand, which is in Yall on Saturday, the 21st of September.